Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're gonna create our very first chart with chart.js, and we're gonna do a line graph. So let's get going on that now. Now to get started, we're gonna create a line chart. Now a line chart is sort of a basic chart. If we select this right here, you can see what it looks like. We can hover over and get some more information, but really we just have a line with a grid here. So let's go ahead and actually get this going. Now, first we're going to take some data and we're going to just sort of customize this as we go to actually fit the needs of what we wanted to do. So if we scroll all the way up here, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a canvas item we can do that just head to our HTML let's get rid of this hello world and we can create a new canvas okay get rid of that extra bracket here and if you've never used canvas before it's essentially a drawing surface for JavaScript it allows you to do some cool vectorized stuff and really what we just need here is an ID and a width and a height so let's go ahead and give this an ID we can say the ID for this is line chart, obviously with correct capitalization. Okay, so we have line chart and we're gonna give this a height of let's say 400 and a width of let's say 400. And now we have our canvas. Now our canvas by default really does nothing. And in fact, if we head to this page, you're gonna see we don't have anything. But if we inspect this page here in this general area, you'll see that we do in fact have this block level element right here. Um, if we can get to our HTML, when we hover over canvas, you can see that it exists, right? If we were to give it a border solid you can see that here's the boundaries right here. Okay, super cool. Let's head back and now what we need to do is in our JavaScript, we need to first grab the chart. And if you were using jQuery, you would do so with the dollar sign ID my cart. If you're just using straight up JavaScript, you can do so with the document.getElementById. So let's head to our JavaScript and in our main.js, we can say document.get and element by ID. And inside of here, we just need to pass it a string, that string of which is the ID, which we had as line chart. Okay, line chart. And just like that, let's go ahead and assign this to a constant variable. So we can say const chart is equal to, and then document get element by ID. Now let's go ahead and do a console.log and let's log this chart variable. And let's go ahead and head back to our document and let's give this a refresh. You can see we have in our console down here, let's go ahead and bump up the size of this. I'm gonna open up here, bump up the size, and you can see we just have basically our canvas item here, where of course we have its width and all sorts of stuff. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this canvas variable and we're going to pass it into a new chart. So as you can see, if we scroll down here, you can see we need a new chart declaration and we need to pass it in the chart itself. So in here they're using CTX for context. I'm gonna keep mine as chart just to make this a little bit easier to read. But what we wanna do is say, let line chart equal to new and then we're going to get to declare chart. Now you might be wondering where chart comes from. Well, in this world, we are, we're not importing things. We're loading this script first. So chart has, we now have access to chart and then inside of main.js. So we're loading this chart.js first and then main.js. So we're not needing some import statements or anything like that here. But if you were doing this in sort of a system where you're using require import, you might need to do that. Okay. So we have a new chart. Now inside of this chart function, we need to pass it the context. In this case, it's this variable chart. Now, if we head down to the line chart section of this documentation, you can see we declare a new chart with the context and then 
have a comma with an object where we pass in some information. So here we need a comma, an object. Now inside of this object, we can say type is then a, then a string, which is line, okay? Because we're doing a line chart. And we need to pass it some data and potentially some options. Now, right now, this data doesn't really exist, but let's go ahead and say data colon. And inside of here, let's scroll down and just pluck this data directly out of here where they have this var data. Let's go ahead and pull all of this out of here. We're gonna talk about this a bit more after we get this up and running. You can paste this in directly like this. But as you can see, we have data is now going to be equal to, and let's get rid of this data equals and just have an object where we have our labels, our data sets, and where we actually have our data values down here. Let's wrap this up with a semicolon. Okay, let's check this out in our browser now and see if we have any errors. And as you can see, I'm getting unexpected token parentheses. So let's go ahead and verify that everything that we have here is as it should be. You'll notice we have a new function where we're opening up and we say new chart, we have a parenthesis, and we have a bracket, we have an open bracket, we have an open bracket, and it looks like we are missing this closed uh, bracket on the data. So let's go ahead and have that there, okay? And now we should be all set. You'll notice we have a bracket to close out the data object. We have a bracket to close out the array. Then we have a bracket to close out the overall data object. And then we have a bracket and a parenthesis to close out our initial object creation and function. And just like that, we have a line graph. Now this is pretty sweet, uh, but we didn't do a whole lot. I mean, we just kind of pasted in some scripts. We added a canvas. And the main thing that we really needed to do was say, hey, create a new chart with the type of line. And here's some data labels. Here's some labels and your data sets. And here's some color information too. So as you can see, I mean, we didn't do a whole lot because we ended up just copying and pasting a ton of stuff. But what we're gonna do in the next video is we're going to take control of this chart. We're going to totally customize this in all sorts of ways. We're gonna break down this object. We're gonna add some options. We're gonna talk about what makes this work here. And you'll notice it's fully responsive even though we gave it a width. So what's up with that? So how can we control the width and height of this chart? so that we can get it to do exactly what we'd like it to do. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you wanna see the rest of these videos before they're available on YouTube, head to store.leveluptutorials.com and you can purchase these for streaming and download access or you can become a Level Up Pro and have access to this entire series right now. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.